Hey guys, it's Goosebumps Completionist, and today I'm bringing you another Haunting Hour episode review. This episode is actually a two-parter from Season 3. It was directed by Neil Fernley and written by Jack Monaco, and the episode in question is The Golem. Now, I actually remember when this episode released and I saw it the day of. It was a Hanukkah special around the holiday season for that um, year. I think it was 2012. And from what I remember of it, I really enjoyed it back then, but it never really cracked in that respect here for me. I just thought it was fine or good. But revisiting it after a long time, I think this is the first time I've seen this episode in years I have to say that this has to be one of the most thematic and well-woven with subtext stories that I've seen from the Haunting Hour show. And I'm not trying to undersell kids' horror uh, when I say this, but most of the time in kids' horror, you have these themes and stuff that might be there, but it's like surface level, or if they do go deep with it, it consumes the whole story. But very rarely do you see a bunch of them kind of intertwined here. And what this story is actually playing on is a very old Jewish folk tale or folk legend that I'm not very well versed in. So I don't want to act like I am or anything. But I have seen the classic silent movie called The Gollum. I have seen a, another story from a similar franchise that did something similar like this. Uh, maybe not to this extent. Um, but, wow, this story was very grand and very emotional and kind of creepy. It actually legitimately creeped me out watching this. There's something about it that just felt off. <laughs> now, it does have its things about it, <laughs> let's just say. But, off the bat, if you have not watched this two-parter, The Gollum, I dare say that this one is a hidden gem in the show. When you hear about The Haunting Hour, you always hear about Really You, Fear Never Knocks, you hear about Mascot, Dreamcatcher, you know, it's it's typical for a show to have its big ticket horror uh, stories. But when you get one like this that is, isn't quite played up that horrific, but it actually has a pretty terrifying tale all its own, um, I, I just, I, I like coming across stuff like this. And uh, it might actually scratch... My top 10 of the whole show. I don't know. I have to rewatch everything and review it to really make my mind up. But as of now, this was a super solid one. You need to go check this one out. Um, so yeah, let's start off with the concept here. So the concept is about these two siblings. I think one is Jeremy and one is, I want to say her name is Robbie or Ronnie. I could, I, I can't remember her name, but she's played by Casey Rawl, who I think was in that... Uh, episode wrong number whatever it's called and she was also in pumpkin head uh, or pumpkin heads so yeah she's a series regular in this and um it's very sad off the bat i mean you're not going to expect this especially part one part one is mainly dealing with the tragedy of what's going on here but there's this very elderly woman she's on her deathbed and she's talking to her grandson. And her grandson is like by her side. And she's like in the middle of dying. It's very urgent. And she is begging and pleading her grandson essentially. To promise her that she'll go over to Russia. And finish something that started in the past. And we, we learn through flashbacks that are actually shown in black and white. Of this wartime many years ago. I'm assuming it's World War II. And because... The family here are Jewish. I'm assuming that they're implying that these soldiers were Germans during World War II. And um, they, while they don't show the symbology of what they wore during the time, it's easy to pick up on. And it's about this village, I think in Russia or nearby Russia, that gets impacted by these soldiers. And these survivors hiding underground to avoid persecution... Um, they're led by this professor who has this like magic ability to animate things to life with a spell, but he's actually kind of frail in health and he needs to pass on this ability to an apprentice. So uh, it turns out that grandma was given the gift to have this incantation that may or may not bring stuff to life. And while they're down there hiding out and they know that the soldiers are coming, they build this 
golem out of stone and the grandmother brings the golem to life to be their protector against the germans coming in well we find out or i guess it happens off screen but it's safe to imply what the golem does to these soldiers well it turns out after the war ended the golem was said to only be controlled by the grandmother and the in the the locals feared uh the grandmother because she wielded a lot of power and they feared the golem tremendously and she was like the the only person that could ever suppress it down and she's been holding on to this spell like inside of her all these years to keep it down but since she's dying she needs to she needs the grandson to go over there to carry the torch because once she dies the golem's going to come to life essentially and who knows what it's going to do so unfortunately the grandmother passes away and she's cremated and uh the grandson is talking with his parents and his sister they're like we need to go to russia grandma would have wanted this we got to spread the ashes in the village that she came from and they agree so part two picks up in the russian village you know that took place in the flashback and once they're there the kids are greeted by this man who is trying to help them from this <laughs> uh village mob essentially that's come around them and they think that uh the sister looks identical to the grandmother and that she might be the the witch or the the person that holds the magic of the golem and they think that the golem has returned and the kids don't know this but the golem actually is walking around in the woods and uh nobody really knows where it is but they know it's here and they're trying to get to his sister essentially so uh, he's talking with this man. I forget his name. I think his name is like Ivan or something. I, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm confusing the characters' names here. But uh, the man essentially tells him like what he knew and observed with, with, the, with the kid's grandmother. And Jeremy, uh, throughout some interactions in the story, starts to piece together that um, there, there, there's something off about it. And it comes to a point in the story where Jeremy comes face to face uh with this golem right and he's holding his grandmother's ashes in his backpack and he realizes that um whenever he waves his backpack to the golem the golem seems to freeze and it's the grandmother's ashes that seems to be commanding it and now he holds the power uh with the with the incantation that he remembered that his grandmother was chanting the moments before she died uh kind of help you know him control it so he decides to go back and try to find his sister who's been kidnapped, tied up, and pretty much held at knife point. Yes. <laughs> In the kids' horror show, she's being held by knife point by these, you know, upset villagers, essentially. So, the brother comes in and may or may not saves the day with the golem, right? The golem puts a stop to his sister's would-be attackers. Uh, they end up putting the grandmother's ashes where it needs to go and possibly putting the golem away forever... Uh, tying together their grandmother's legacy and their grief of losing her and um you know it, it plays into the message of honoring your heritage and uh, ending generational trauma essentially i think it just ends on like a very somber note like we're supposed to feel bad for the golem um but that's that's basically what you're going to expect out of this story so yeah um the po let's, let's start off with the positives here because i think this story has some of the coolest elements I've seen in this show by far with the World War II flashback stuff in black and white. I don't know. It adds this historical fiction layer to the story. I don't know. Being able to put it into uh, a specific place in Russia when you have German soldiers coming in and you have these survivors trying to put, you know, put a sense of community uh, together in one last attempt at protection and, uh, how do or die that was for them you, you feel the weight of emotions in, in the moment there and what that meant back then but then what it became over time was a burden on the person who wielded all the power and that plays into her kin and her kin's kin and that plays into this generational trauma that's been facing in this russian village ever since with this golem and the story is one huge metaphor on generational trauma and getting over trauma in general and you know doing right by your ancestors and who came before you and it's very impactful and it's very emotional for that the first 
like, I'm not going to lie. This takes up, like, around 14, 15 minutes of part one. But the grandmother's death sequence with her telling her story and going back in time, that was super rough to watch. And, and this is coming from somebody who's lost their grandparents. And, you know, while I wasn't there when it happened, um, I've heard stories from my own family and how hard that would have been. And how that kid kept his composure like that, I mean, that's insane to me. But Jeremy... That plays into the rest of the story because it was so impactful and emotional. Jeremy was a very courageous character. And you can tell that he was a good kid at heart and he really wanted to help his grandmother. And you can see that that's his whole mission. He didn't really understand the trauma he was facing or being dealt with the handle. He just wanted to honor his grandmother and, you know, do something nice for her one last time because he made that promise. And it's. It's just a poetic story. Now, with the sister character, Casey Rawl, I think she turned in a great performance for what she was given material-wise, but um, her character, when she was in the story, was kind of fun and added something to the story. Uh, I do think that the the second part with the, with the Russian characters and the villagers, they were actually pretty creepy. And why, why I say this story was creepy is because the leader of this pack of, like, angry mobs, essentially, uh, he's, like, carrying around weaponry, like, like a knife and stuff this whole episode, and every interaction he has with the kids is almost like a serial killer vibe. Like, the way he looks at them, like, there's something off about him, and it's super creepy. And you'll get these scenes where the kids think they hear something. Like, there's a whole scene where... Um, Jeremy, he's walking outside by himself trying to hide from these villagers. And you know, I, don't, I don't know. It's just, it, it feels kind of like a a mild slasher thriller thing going on there. And it's just, I don't know. It, it, the suspense really works. I don't know. And the Gollum stuff, while before we get into the negatives about it, there's some things about it that's just really goofy. I don't know. Just the, the idea of this unstoppable force and how, how that plays into your mind in the story really does help carry the narrative for you when you're watching this, at least for me, because the Gollum was strategically kept off screen for pretty much the whole episode until the finale at pretty much at the right place at the right time at the climax, where we finally get a reveal and like full lighting of this thing. I mean, you do see some body shots of it, but it's it's in, like, moonlighting and stuff outside. Um, but I just thought the way the Gollum was handled in, in terms of, like, showing it on a, on screen, I definitely think uh, Neil Farrelly, or Farrelly, however you say his name, I'm sorry if I'm butchering it, um, did a good job creating suspense with the character. And when you have the back backstory and context, and we can only imagine what it did to the soldiers, it leaves the question, like, what can it do just to normal people that are mostly defenseless? Um, there, there's a legitimately th a threat level there with it. Um, and I, and I do think that the story, you know, while it ends on a sudden note, it does serve a powerful punch to what the story was trying to bring. And, uh, I thought it wrapped up pretty nicely. Now with the negatives, now <sighs> there's two minute ones. The main thing I think I, I don't like about this if I could say anything I don't like about it, is the Gollum design and how it's displayed on screen. There is some wonky CGI and sound effects dealing with the Gollum. The look of it's not too scary at all. Um, it kind of looks like a Play-Doh'd, you know, kindergartner made it version of Ben Grimm uh, from Fantastic Four, just without the cool costume. <laughs> um, not It doesn't look like the most threatening thing when you finally see it in the light. You're just kind of like, Okay, um, so yeah, th that's one of the detriments there. And the second thing is, I do feel like in part one, even though I said it's very emotional, a lot of the screen time of this episode collectively is eaten up by the first 15 minutes of this grandmother like going through what she is. I do feel like they could have condensed it a little bit because... The whole ordeal, I, I just found myself just like, all right, can we get, can we move on from this? This is like a little too much. And I felt like, while it didn't go overboard with what, like, in the context of what happened, I think it was pretty naturally done. 
I did feel like it was kind of just taking its sweet time to pad out runtime. Um, and I and I saw that as a detriment to it after I finished the whole thing said and done. I was like, yeah, you know, part one did not need to be an entire 20-something minutes. They could have made that maybe, maybe 15 minutes and just try to go that f exactly 40-minute route. <laughs> Um, or maybe 35-ish probably would have served this story better. Uh, its pace does take a little while to click on, but I'm not saying that it's all a wash in that like first 15 minutes or so, because you do get some really cool backstory involved with that, and the backstory does eat up some time too. Um, so it's a, it's a give and take with that. Other than that, um, this one might not be the scariest episode by any means, but Man, it's a it's a super thematic one, and it's emotional. It has great performances for what they were, um, and it's just it's like a whole concept. And I love to see kids horror stories that feel like those rich adult horror anthology stories that I find myself gravitated to, and shows like Tales from the Crypt or Creep Show or Tales from the Dark Side, for that matter. This is super comparable to the best of those shows in my opinion um and i tip my hat to jack monaco for writing something like this and also you know I, I might as well mention this a lot of people love to dig on the haunting hour for it being a late 2000s early 2010s show and all the kids at least the boys have like justin bieber or jonas brother haircuts yeah <laughs> jeremy the main character has basically a jonas brother haircut um, if you want to flame him for that, you know, whatever. But then again, you know, you go watch the classic 90s Goosebumps show. Um, there's people with bowl cuts there. So it is what it is. But nonetheless, if I had to rate this thing from a zero to five star basis, the Gollum part one and part two, um, in my opinion, was pretty great. Almost fantastic. It, it just, it did what it was trying to do. Um, I think in terms of like the holiday stories or the emotional ones that Haunting Hour has strewn throughout, this is one of the stronger episodes in that regard. And it's honestly something I, will, I, I find myself wanting to revisit every year now. I mean, I think this might be the second or third time I've ever watched both episodes in succession like this. So um, yeah, I definitely want to check this one out more as the years go on. So I, I'll probably give this like a an A tier, which is like a 4.5 or higher. With those negatives, though, I decided to be mildly forgiving on the bigger one and only deduct 0.4 off, and I gave this a 4.6 out of 5 stars. It's a A-, minus, but it's a, it's a strong A-. minus. Like, this is a must-watch episode recommendation for me, especially if you like stories with themes and subtext to peel back. This is for you. If you're just a, a watcher that wants to be scared and wants scary monsters, Monster of the Week stuff, this is not going to do it for you. You're going to laugh at the golem, think he's whack. Um, you're not going to like the concept because it doesn't play into the horror that much. Um, but if you, like I said, like the former, you need, to, you need to check this out. So yeah, that's my thoughts on the golem. Let me know down in the comment section if you've seen this episode before. Do you love this or do you hate this? I'm dying to know. And I'll see you next time.